The North American 1015 was a hypersonic rocket powered aircraft operated by the United States Air Force and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration as part of the X plane series of experimental aircraft. The X 15 set speed and altitude records in the 1960s, reaching the edge of outer space and returning with valuable data used in aircraft and spacecraft design. The X-15's official world record for the highest speed ever recorded by a manned, powered aircraft, set in October 1967 when William J. Knight flew at Mach 6.70 at 102,100 feet 31,120 meters, a speed of 4,520 miles per hour 7,274 kilometers per hour, 2,021 meters per second, has remained unbroken as of 2019. During the X-15 program, 12 pilots flew a combined 199 flights. Of these, 8 pilots flew a combined 13 flights which met the Air Force spaceflight criterion by exceeding the altitude of 50 miles 80 km, thus qualifying these pilots as being astronauts. The Air Force pilots qualified for military astronaut wings immediately, while the civilian pilots were eventually awarded NASA astronaut wings in 2005, 35 years after the last X-15 flight. Topic: <laughs> Design and Development. The X-15 was based on a concept study from Walter Dornberger for the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics for a hypersonic research aircraft. The requests for proposal RFPs were published on 30 December 1954 for the airframe and on 4 February 1955 for the rocket engine. The X-15 was built by two manufacturers, North American Aviation was contracted for the airframe in November 1955, and Reaction Motors was contracted for building the engines in 1956. Like many X-Series aircraft, the X-15 was designed to be carried aloft and drop launched from under the wing of a B-52 mothership. Air Force NB-52A. The High and Mighty One. Serial 52003, and NB-52B, The Challenger. Serial 52008, a.k.a. Balls 8 served as carrier planes for all X-15 flights. Release took place at an altitude of about 8.5 miles kilometers and a speed of about 500 miles per hour 805 kilometers per hour. The X-15 fuselage was long and cylindrical, with rear fairings that flattened its appearance, and thick, dorsal and ventral wedge fin stabilizers. Parts of the fuselage were heat-resistant nickel alloy in Canel X-750. The retractable landing gear comprised a nose wheel carriage and two rear skids. The skids did not extend beyond the ventral fin, which required the pilot to jettison the lower fin just before landing. The lower fin was recovered by parachute. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cockpit and pilot systems. The X-15 was the product of developmental research, and changes were made to various systems over the course of the program and between the different models. The X-15 was operated under several different scenarios, including attachment to a launch aircraft, drop, main engine start and acceleration, ballistic flight into thin air, space, re-entry into thicker air, unpowered glide to landing, and direct landing without a main engine start. The main rocket engine operated only for a relatively short part of the flight, but boosted the X-15 to its high speeds and altitudes. Without main engine thrust, the X-15's instruments and control surfaces remained functional, but the aircraft could not maintain altitude. Because the X-15 also had to be controlled in an environment where there was too little air for aerodynamic flight control surfaces, it had a reaction control system that used rocket thrusters. 
There were two different X-15 pilot control setups, one used three joysticks, the other, one joystick, the X-15 type with multiple control sticks for the pilot placed a traditional rudder and stick between a left joystick that sent commands to the reaction control system, and a third joystick on the right used during high-G maneuvers to augment the center stick. In addition to pilot input, the X-15 Stability Augmentation System SAS sent inputs to the aerodynamic controls to help the pilot maintain attitude control. The reaction control system RCS could be operated in two modes, manual and automatic. The automatic mode used a feature called Reaction Augmentation System ROS that helped stabilize the vehicle at high altitude. The ROS was typically used for approximately three minutes of an X-15 flight before automatic power off. The alternative control setup used the MH-96 flight control system, which allowed one joystick in place of three and simplified pilot input. The MH-96 could automatically blend aerodynamic and rocket controls, depending on how effective each system was at controlling the aircraft. Among the many controls were the rocket engine throttle and a control for jettisoning the ventral tail fin. Other features of the cockpit included heated windows to prevent icing and a forward headrest for periods of high deceleration. The X-15 had an ejection seat designed to operate at speeds up to Mach 4, 4480 kilometers per hour, 2784 miles per hour, and or 120,000 feet, 37 kilometers altitude, although it was never used during the program. In the event of ejection, the seat was designed to deploy fins, which were used until it reached a safer speed, altitude at which to deploy its main parachute. Pilots wore pressure suits, which could be pressurized with nitrogen gas. Above 35,000 feet 11 kilometers altitude, the cockpit was pressurized to 3.5 psi 0.24 atmospheres with nitrogen gas, while oxygen for breathing was fed separately to the pilot. Topic. Propulsion The initial 24 powered flights used two reaction motors XLR-11 liquid propellant rocket engines, enhanced to provide a total of 16,000 pounds force 71 kilonewtons of thrust as compared to the 6,000 pounds force 27 kilonewtons that a single XLR-11 provided in 1947 to make the Bell X-1 the first aircraft to fly faster than the speed of sound. The XLR-11 used ethyl alcohol and liquid oxygen. By November 1960, Reaction Motors was able to deliver the XLR-99 rocket engine, generating 57,000 pounds force 250 kilonewtons of thrust. The remaining 175 flights of the X-15 used XLR-99 engines, in a single-engine configuration. The XLR-99 used anhydrous ammonia and liquid oxygen as propellant, and hydrogen peroxide to drive the high-speed turbopump that delivered propellants to the engine. It could burn 15,000 pounds 6 kilograms of propellant in 80 seconds. Jules Bergman titled his book on the program 90 Seconds to Space to describe the total powered flight time of the aircraft. The X-15 Reaction Control System RCS, for maneuvering in the low-pressure, density environment, used high-test peroxide HTP, which decomposes into water and oxygen in the presence of a catalyst and could provide a specific impulse of 140 seconds. The HTP also fueled a turbopump for the main engines and auxiliary power units APIS. Additional tanks for helium and liquid nitrogen performed other functions, the fuselage interior was purged with helium gas, and liquid nitrogen was used as coolant for various systems. Topic. Wedge tail and hypersonic stability The X-15 had a thick wedge tail to enable it to fly in a steady manner at hypersonic speeds. This produced a significant amount of drag at lower speeds, the blunt end at the rear of the X-15 could produce as much drag as an entire F-104 Starfighter. 
A wedge shape was used because it is more effective than the conventional tail as a stabilizing surface at hypersonic speeds. A vertical tail area equal to 60% of the wing area was required to give the X-15 adequate directional stability. Stability at hypersonic speeds was aided by side panels which could be extended from the tail to increase the overall surface area, and these panels doubled as air brakes. Topic. Operational history Altitudes attained by X-15 aircraft fell short of those of Alan Shepard's and Gus Grissom's Project Mercury space capsules in 1961, or of any other manned spacecraft. However, the X-15 ranks supreme among manned rocket-powered aircraft, becoming the world's first operational spaceplane in the early 1960s. Before 1958, United States Air Force USAF and NACA officials discussed an orbital X-15 spaceplane, the X-15B that would launch into outer space from atop an SM-64 Navajo missile. This was cancelled when the NACA became NASA and adopted Project Mercury instead. By 1959, the Boeing X-20 Dinosaur Space Glider program was to become the USAF's preferred means for launching military manned spacecraft into orbit. This program was cancelled in the early 1960s before an operational vehicle could be built. Various configurations of the Navajo were considered, and another proposal involved a Titan I stage. Three X 15s were built, flying 199 test flights, the last on 24 October 1968. The first X 15 flight was an unpowered glide flight by Scott Crossfield, on 8 June 1959. Crossfield also piloted the first powered flight on 17 September 1959, and his first flight with the XLR-99 rocket engine on 15 November 1960. Twelve test pilots flew the X-15. Among these were Neil Armstrong, later a NASA astronaut and first man to set foot on the Moon, and Joe Engel, later a commander of NASA Space Shuttle missions. In a 1962 proposal, NASA considered using the B-52, X-15 as a launch platform for a Blue Scout rocket to place satellites weighing up to 150 pounds 68 kilograms into orbit. In July and August 1963, pilot Joseph A. Walker exceeded 100 kilometers in altitude, joining NASA astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts as the first human beings to cross that line on their way to outer space. The USAF awarded astronaut wings to anyone achieving an altitude of 50 miles 80 km, while the FAI set the limit of space at 100 km .1 miles. On 15 November 1967, U.S. Air Force test pilot Major Michael J. Adams was killed during X-15 Flight 191 when X-15-3, AFS -er. Number 56-6672, entered a hypersonic spin while descending, then oscillated violently as aerodynamic forces increased after re-entry. As his aircraft's flight control system operated the control surfaces to their limits, acceleration built to 15 g 0 150 meters per square second vertical and 8.0 g 0 78 meters per square second lateral. The airframe broke apart at 60,000 feet 18 km altitude, scattering the X-15's wreckage across 50 square miles 130 square kilometers. On 8 May 2004, a monument was erected at the cockpit's locale, near Randsburg, California. Major Adams was posthumously awarded Air Force astronaut wings for his final flight in X-15-3, which had reached an altitude of 50.4 miles .1 In 1991, his name was added to the Astronaut Memorial. The second plane, X-15-2, was rebuilt after a landing accident on 9 November 1962 which damaged the craft and injured its pilot, John McKay. It was lengthened by 2.4 feet 73 centimeters, had a pair of auxiliary fuel tanks attached beneath its fuselage and wings, and a complete heat-resistant ablative coating was added. 
The plane was renamed the X-15A2, and took flight for the first time on 25 June 1964. It reached its maximum speed of 4520 miles per hour, 7274 kilometers per hour in October 1967 with pilot William Pete Knight of the US Air Force in control. Five principal aircraft were used during the X15 program, three X15 planes and two modified non-standard NB52 bombers, X15156-6670, 81 free flights X152, later X15A2, 56-6671, 31 free flights as X15-2, 22 free flights as X15A2, 53 in total. Total X-15-3-56-6672, 65 free flights, including the Flight 191 disaster NB-52A-52003 nicknamed the High and Mighty One retired in October 1969 NB-52B-52008 nicknamed the Challenger, later Balls 8 retired in November 2004 additionally, F-100, F-104 and F-5D chase aircraft and C-130 and C-47 transports supported the program. A 200th flight over Nevada was first scheduled for the 21st of November 1968 to be flown by William Pete Knight. Numerous technical problems and outbreaks of bad weather delayed this proposed flight six times, and it was permanently cancelled on the 20th of December 1968. This X-15 was detached from the B-52 and then put into indefinite storage. The aircraft was later donated to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum for display. <laughs> <laughs> Current static displays X-15A1 Number 56-6670 is on display in the National Air and Space Museum. Milestones of Flight. Gallery, Washington, D.C. X-15A2 AFSR. Number 56-6671 is at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, near Dayton, Ohio. It was retired to the museum in October 1969. The aircraft is displayed in the museum's research and development gallery alongside other X-planes, including the Bell X-1B and Douglas X-3 Stiletto. Topic Mockups Dryden Flight Research Center, Edwards AFB, California, United States Painted with AFSR Number 56-6672 Pima Air and Space Museum, adjacent to Davis Monthan AFB, Tucson, Arizona painted with AFSR. Number 56-6671 Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, McMinnville, Oregon painted with AFSR. Number 56-6672 a full-scale wooden mock-up of the X-15, it is displayed along with one of the rocket engines. Topic Stratofortress Mother Ships NB-52A AFSR. Number 5203 is displayed at the Pima Air and Space Museum adjacent to Davis Monthan AFB in Tucson, Arizona. It launched the X-15-1 30 times, the X-15-2, 11 times, and the X-15-3 31 times as well as the M2F-2 4 times, the HL-10 11 times and the X-24A twice. NB-52B AFSR. Number 52008 is on permanent display outside the north gate of Edwards AFB, California. It launched the majority of X-15 flights. Topic. Record flights Topic. Highest flights 
Over 13 flights, eight pilots flew above 264,000 feet or 50 miles, thereby qualifying as astronauts according to the United States definition of the space border. All five Air Force pilots flew above 50 miles and were awarded military astronaut wings contemporaneously with their achievements, including Adams, who received the distinction posthumously following the Flight 191 disaster. However the other three were NASA employees, and did not receive a comparable decoration at the time. In 2004, the Federal Aviation Administration conferred its first ever commercial astronaut wings on Mike Melville and Brian Binney, pilots of the commercial SpaceshipOwn, another spaceplane with a flight profile comparable to the X-15s. Following this in 2005, NASA retroactively awarded its civilian astronaut wings to Dana then living, and to McKay and Walker posthumously. Forrest S. Peterson, the only Navy pilot in the X-15 program, never took the aircraft above the requisite altitude and thus never earned astronaut wings. Of the 13 flights, only two—flights 90 and 91, piloted by Walker, Exceeded the Kármán line, the internationally recognized 100 km altitude used by the FAI to denote the edge of space. Fatal Topic. Fastest recorded flights Topic. Pilots Killed in the crash of X-15-3 asterisk asterisk white replaced selected pilot Ivan Kinchelow, who died before the first X-15 flight. Topic. Specifications Other configurations include the Reaction Motors XLR-11 equipped X-15, and the long version. General characteristics Crew, 1. Length, 50 feet 9 in 15.47 meters Wingspan, 22 feet 4 in 6.81 meters Height, 13 feet 3 in 4.04 meters Wing area, 200 square feet 19 square meters Empty weight, 14,600 pounds 6,622 kilograms Powerplant, 1 times reaction motors XLR99RM2 liquid-fueled rocket engine, 70,400 lbf 313 kilonewtons thrust performance Maximum speed, 4,520 miles per hour 7,270 kilometers per hour, 3,930 kn Range, 280 miles 450 kilometers, 240 nmi Service ceiling, 354,330 feet 108,000 meters Rate of climb, 60,000 feet per minute 300 meters per second Thrust, weight 2.07. Topic. See also Single-person spacecraft Aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era Bell X-2 Douglas D-558-2 Skyrocket Related lists List of rocket aircraft List of X-15 flights List of spaceflight-related accidents and incidents <laughs>